Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome back. Uh, so let's let's drive uh, characteristics impedance. Let's try to drive a characteristics impedance of any transmission line. Uh, in our case, is going to be a two conductor model. So this is what I'm going to do. The first thing that I need to do is this. Okay, ZS. ZS is going to be your source impedance. VS is going to be your source voltage. This is connected to some load which is ZL and uh, with the help of some line which is Z0. Okay, so our circuit is basically I have a source, I have a transmission line which is which has an impedance of Z0 which we are trying to drive and we have some load impedance which is connected to my transmission line. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to write a set of voltage equations and I'm going to try to write a set of uh, current equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to write a, a voltage equation in terms of this. V of Z, which is going to be V O plus E to the negative gamma Z plus V O minus E to the gamma Z. This is the first set of voltage equation that I'm going to write. So what do I mean by this? What does it mean? So this is what it means. Let's say I have a voltage which is going from my source to my transmission line and going towards the load. This is my voltage that is going towards the load. Since it's going from my source to my load, it has some amplitude. Let's call this VO plus. Okay, that's why I have VO plus. And then due to some mismatch, there is going to be a reflection and the reflected voltage, so I'm going to write the reflected one. So I'm going to write the reflector, something that is reflecting back into my system. Like this. Let's call this VO minus. Okay. So let's call this VO minus. So it's a combination. This, this voltage is going to be a combination of V incident plus V reflected. This is, this is what that definition is. So it's going to be a combination, this total voltage is going to be a combination of my voltage that is going from my source and whatever is returning back from my load to my source. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write an equation for my I of Z as well. I of Z, which is going to be a current. I O plus, which is going in a positive direction. Positive direction means it's going from my, from my source to my load times E to the negative gamma Z plus IO minus E to the positive gamma Z. So this is that reflected current, this is that forward going current, and this is that reflected current. Okay, what is gamma? Let's just first define what is gamma. Gamma has a form of alpha plus J beta. Gamma is known as complex propagation constant. This consists of an attenuation constant alpha, which is known as your attenuation constant, and we have beta, which is your phase constant. So gamma has a form of alpha plus J beta, and it has attenuation constant, which is going to be some real property. And, and beta is going to be a phase constant, which is in terms of an imaginary property, uh, imaginary, con imaginary thing. And if you were to look at the definition uh, of telegrapher's equation, what were the imaginary part? Imaginary part were actually L and C. These are not physically present in my transmission line, but their behavior is there. This is how the transmission line is operating at. If you were to look at it, based on this definition of alpha, or based on this definition of gamma, this top equation can be rewritten as V of Z, V O plus, e to the negative alpha z times it by e to the negative j beta z plus v o minus e to the alpha z times it by e to the j beta z. When I have same basis, the power is adding up, so I'll end up with exactly the same thing. So I can split it like this, or I can also write it just like this. I can split based on the definition of my gamma value right here. Same thing for my current definition as well. One more thing that I want to talk about is this. Why with VO plus I have E to the negative gamma Z? And why with VO minus I have E to the gamma Z? So if you were to look at a graph of E to the negative X, 
which in our scenario, which is going to be this. This thing has a graph that looks something like this. So this is e to the negative x, e raised to negative x. And e to e raised to positive x, it has a graph like this. So indeed, when my voltage is going from my source to my load, from my left to right, I'm using the negative part. And from my right to my left, from my load to my source, I'm using the positive definition. That's why there is a negative sign here. That's why there is a positive sign here. So let's pick up this equation and let's try to drive the characteristics impedance of my line. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up my voltage equation, which is right here. I'm going to use it here. So V of Z, V of Z, which is going to be VO plus E to the negative gamma Z plus VO minus E to the gamma Z. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a derivative of both of these sides. I'm going to take a derivative of this side and I'm going to take a derivative of this side. So when once I take a derivative of this side, so D over DZ, this would become D V of Z DZ is equals to, once I take a derivative with respect to Z, what would be the derivative of E to the negative gamma Z? So it's just like this, E A of T. What is the derivative of this? The derivative of this is going to be that kernel which will come out at the front and this whole thing. So this derivative is going to be VO plus. This negative gamma will come out. Negative gamma E to the negative gamma Z. Plus, once I take a derivative of this entire thing, this is going to be VO minus gamma E to the gamma Z. This is going to be a derivative of this. So let's just clean up this equation a little bit. So this, let's take out negative gamma from this side. So what we have here is going to be VO plus E to the negative gamma Z minus, minus, minus is going to be plus VO minus E to the gamma Z. All right, so far so good. Okay, let's write this DV of Z dz as is okay so i know something about dvz over dz if you recall it from my transmission line telegraphy's equation actually so let's recall so recall dv of z dz is actually r's of prime plus j omega l of prime times it by i of z. This is actually recalling it from my telegrapher's equation when we drive the wave equation for it. So this is this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply plug in, in place of dvz over dz, this guy. And I'm going to bring this negative in too. So this negative r's of prime plus j omega l of prime times it by i of z is equals to negative gamma VO plus E to the negative gamma Z minus VO minus E to the gamma Z. All right, having that said, let's do this. So, so far so good. Simply, so let's divide this guy by negative gamma. Let's divide this guy by negative gamma. So far so good. So far, so good. So this, this minus will cancel out. Over on this side, I will left with R's of prime plus J omega L of prime divided by gamma times it by I of Z is equals to VO plus E to the negative gamma Z minus VO minus E to the gamma Z. So far, so good. So let's calculate what, let's define so let's find what is R's of prime plus J omega L of prime divided by gamma. All right. So let's recall something uh, regarding gamma. If you recall it from our telegraphy's equation, gamma is actually, if you remember it, gamma is actually R's of prime plus J omega L of prime 
times it by g of prime plus j omega c of prime. This is the definition of gamma. So I'm going to simply plug in this definition here in place of gamma. Check out my last video for it. So this is going to be R of prime plus j omega l of prime divided by, I'm going to write it in a split manner. So R of prime plus j omega l of prime multiply by g of prime plus j omega c of prime all right let's divide so in order for me to solve this let's divide this both sides by one r's of prime plus j omega l of prime divided by r's of prime plus j omega l of prime so this and this will cancel out this thing has a power of one since this is square root, this is power of half. So 1 minus half is going to be half, which will be on top. So this whole thing would be R of prime plus J omega L of prime divided by G of prime plus J omega C of prime. I hope you're all seeing this. Let's give this guy some name. Let's call this guy Z naught. Okay, so this... This whole thing, R of prime plus J omega L of prime divided by gamma is actually R of square root of R of prime plus J omega L of prime divided by G of prime plus J omega C of prime. And we're calling it Z naught. So this is your Z naught. Okay. Uh, so let's do this Z naught. Okay. Let's define this. If this whole thing is known as Z naught, so I'm just making that a small replacement. Let's call this Z naught. Okay. And if you were to look at this term, if you were to look at this term closely, doesn't this look like V of Z? Yes, indeed. So I'm just going to call this, this term, this, this term only, V of Z, which is right here, isn't it? So this is just V of Z divided by I of Z. So, this is very important to know. This is something important to understand. If this whole thing is equals to this, which is R of prime plus G omega L of prime divided by G of prime plus G omega C of prime, the whole thing under root, and I'm calling this Z naught, which is I did, which just which I just did. So, and when I move this I of Z over here, and this is V of Z, isn't that V of Z divided by I of Z is the definition of impedance? In our scenario, this impedance is your characteristics impedance of the line. And this impedance is actually consists of two things. If you were to look at it closely, this consists of I of Z. If you were to look at it, I of Z is actually I O plus plus I O minus. So this impedance is actually an impedance of V O plus divided by I O plus or minus V O minus divided by, uh, sorry, I O minus. So this is an impedance. This is a total impedance of whatever voltage that is going towards my load divided by whatever the current that is going towards my load or in the opposite direction. That's why I have this negative sign. And this impedance is indeed an impedance of a characteristics impedance okay, for, for a piece of wire. Why? Because it consists of two components. It consists of a real component. If you were to look at the definition of your gamma, this thing is real component, which is your resistance, plus some imaginary components, which are with respect to J, which are capacitances and your inductances. These are your imaginary component. If you were to look at it, this thing has a format of R plus minus J of X. So R is going to be a real component, X is going to be either capacitive or inductive. And where do I have L and C coming from actually? This is actually the line, this is the behavior of that piece of wire that you're using. So if there is no resistance, if there is no resistance which is present in my line, so this would become zero, then I'll have infinite num so let me let me do it here. So this is Z which is R of prime plus G omega L of prime divided by G of prime plus G omega C of prime. If I don't have any resistance, this would go to zero. This would become infinity. This and this will cancel out. 
I will end up with only LC. So if I have no resistance, and resistance is an inherent property of any material, any material, even the perf, we don't have anything called perfect conductor, but we have conductors like copper and gold and silver, which are better conductor than copper. Silver and gold are better conductor than copper. It's still, you you don't get a superconductor. So it's still, you you if you do, this whole thing would become something like Z over L over C. Now, if you were to look at this circuit, this actually becomes like a tank circuit. And the behavior of this circuit is going to be that instead of this complex line, which we had earlier when we started off our this, this would simplify it into a form of a LC circuit. So this is that piece of wire. This is another piece of wire. This is another piece of wire. This is another piece of wire and so on. So this is LC. So now when I apply my voltages or current, voltages current, this would start producing me a magnetic field which will be around this. Based on this magnetic field, this magnetic field will produce a electric field in my capacitance because capacitance is a voltage device. Indeed, that voltage, that electric field will produce a magnetic field based on this magnetic field, electric field, magnetic, electric. And this is how my voltages and current propagate in a piece of wire when, when, when I have no resistance. But when I do have resistance, I'll get an impedance which looks something like this. So this is an impedance of a line that is lossy, which is actually, this is the real case. And this is Z naught. This is the case of my line when it's lossless. So in my voltage reflection coefficient video, what we have assumed that my line is lossless. There is no loss due to the line itself. But in reality, we don't have that. But in our analysis, we like to, to assume my line is actually lossless. So I hope you like this small tutorial on the character impedance derivation. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, don't forget to ask me in a comment section. If you have any suggestions, please do let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.